Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to create a responsive and interactive table with auto layout and components in Figma. As you can see, you can change the state of toggle buttons, have hover effects, menus, drop down menus, and checkbox, all of which work in this sample. Additionally, this table is responsive and has a minimum width that prevents it from compressing. Let's see how we can create it together. I brought the image of the table to use as a reference here. This table has two main parts, the title part and the items part. Here is the title part, which includes text with icons, text without icons, an empty cell, and this inactive checkbox icon. And here is the items part, which includes a dragging icon, a checkbox, a name with an avatar, a label, a drop down menu, a status, rating stars icons, a toggle button, a button, and a three dots menu. In order to create the items, I have already prepared the icons and components we need to use. The rating stars icon set range from 0 to 5, a checkbox with 3 states, empty, checked, and inactive, a button with a hover effect, a status label, a toggle button for on and off states, and these four icons. Okay, now let's see the prototypes. For the checkbox, we connected the empty box to the checkbox with onclick and vice versa. For the button, we connected it to the hover state with while hovering. For the toggle button, we connected the off state to the on state with onclick and vice versa. And the stars and the status label do not have prototypes. Let's start with the title part and make the checkbox title first. We need an instance of the inactive checkbox. Set it to auto layout, give it a fill color, and adjust the padding. Be careful to keep all the cells the same height, which here we choose to be 40. Rename it and then make another one. Next, we want to create the empty title. For this, simply copy and paste the checkbox title, leave the checkbox inside it, and change its name. Now we should create the title with the arrow down icon. Add text, bring an instance of the arrow down icon, select both and set them to auto layout. Set the gap to 8. Give them a fill color and adjust the vertical padding to achieve a height of 40. Then give them horizontal padding. Now let's create a title with the arrow up icon. We need to create an arrow up icon first. Duplicate the arrow down icon title, change the icon to arrow up, and rename it accordingly. For a title without any icon, simply duplicate the arrow title and delete its icon. As we can see, by deleting the icon, the height changes. We need to set it back to a height of 30 by increasing the vertical padding. Trying 12, but it's 39 now, not 30. So we can set the bottom padding to 13. So now the height is 40. Okay, we finished create the title cell. In this step, we need to select all of them and set them to a component set.
and rename it to title. Let's create the item cells. The process is the same as for the title cells, so I speed this up. For the user cell, which includes a full name and an avatar, start by drawing a circle and filling it with an image using the Unsplash plugin. Search for an avatar, choose one. And then add text. The following process is the same. Now we have reached the last cell, which is the three dots menu. Give it eight vertical padding to reach a height of 30. This cell does not need much width, so reduce its horizontal padding to 4. Select all of them, set them to a component set, and rename them to item. Now we need to create the columns. Start with the dragon column. The title cell is empty and the item cell contains the dragon icon. To get an instant of them, press the option or alt key while dragging. If the cell are too wide, reduce their width from the component by selecting them and reducing their horizontal padding to 4. Do the same for the title. If the width of the empty cell does not change, adjust it manually. Duplicate the dragon cell 7 more times. If you compare it to the source image, you can see it has a separating line between each cell. Achieve this, select the title component set, press enter to select all the cells, and from the stroke section, give them a stroke. We want the stroke only on the right and bottom side, so set the top and left side to zero. Change the color, copy the color code and do the same for the item cells. Now it's matched the source image. Select all of them and set them to auto layout. Create the other columns, changing the properties of the cells to match the source image. If the title cell is smaller than the item cells, select the title cell and set its horizontal resizing from hog to fill container. This makes the title cell fill its container and match the widths. Align the items to the center by selecting the item cells and choosing center alignment. Now we have all the columns. The next step is to select all of them and set them to a component set. Call it column. Get an instance of all of them and place them close together.
select all and set them to auto layout, renaming it to table. Set the gap to zero. Make it more similar to the source image, change each item's properties in the column component. Our design is not responsive yet. Select all the columns with text and set their horizontal resizing to fill container. By decreasing the width of the table, the cells with text compress and might hide under other columns. Prevent this by defining a minimum width for each column. Select the first column with text and set a minimum width. For example, 130. Do this for all other columns with text. Now the columns cannot get smaller than their minimum size preventing them from compressing and hiding. Let's add a frame. Outer stroke the table. Set it to outside to make it more visible. Only add a stroke to the top and left side since the bottom and right sides already have a stroke. Now, if we change the frame size, we see that it's not responsive. Center the table in the frame and set its constraint to left and right. Increasing the frame's width will expand the table. Playing it shows the toggle button, hover effect, and checkbox working. Now create the drop down and three dots menu. For the drop down menu, create it list. Set it to the same width as the drop down column. And make it a component. Add a variant for hover effect, change the color field, and prototype it with while hovering. Get an instance and make a list. Add them to auto layout. And prototype it by connecting it to the title drop down cell with open overlay. Set it to manual and place it below the drop down title cell. Enable close when clicking outside. Add a shadow for a better result. Create three dots menu similarly. Now we have a responsive and interactive table. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful. Your likes, subscription, and comments give me more energy. Happy designing!